A very good morning to all my dear friends. I am Prashant Mahavani and I warmly welcome all of you to study IQ. I hope you all are doing good, dear friends. Let's have a positive start. Let's try to understand what life is or the nature of life is all about. Now, here are words from Osho. Don't call it uncertainty. Call it wonder. Don't call it insecurity. Call it freedom. And this is what life is all about. If you sit down and think about it, then you will find that most of the time we are running after the security of life we want things that we that we think are good for us but life is such a beauty that it will have something new it will bring something new every moment to you and this is not uncertainty in fact this is the beauty of the life itself we call it insecurity that the things are not happening as per my wish but the thing is it's not insecurity it is freedom with this dear friends uh, if you want to download the pdf of today's lecture you can check out my facebook page or twitter handle study iq provides pen drive and tablet courses for various different exams as you can see on your screen we get uh, many different exams and uh, you can find out more about different exams and our pen drive and tablet courses by checking out studyiq.com now dear friends uh, today is sunday so on sundays you don't have editorials on your newspaper but what i have decided and from last uh, couple of weeks uh, we are doing this thing that every sunday i bring and present to you uh, with a special topic and the topic that I have selected today is a very important topic it is pertaining to autonomy of higher education institutions now when we are talking about higher education institutions we are talking about universities and colleges and it is very important isn't it because higher education education itself let me break let me start with basics education is part of your syllabus you find question based on education every year in your mains examination the other thing is, let me throw some background information regarding how education system uh, has changed and evolved in different times. Now, industrial, pre-industrial revolution era, if we go back before or pre-industrial era, then we find that things were produced by hands, isn't it? So, at that point of time, this, this idea of mass production right mass production was not there so uh, things were produced by in fact uh, you'd be surprised to know this thing that you know guns uh, guns used to have different means they used to look similar but uh, as say for example if your trigger is out of order then you cannot replace a trigger from another gun so you have to produce that trigger so it was more customization because at that point of time we were not knowing about this industrialization and we were not aware about this uh, this mass production setup then later on we had this uh, industrial revolution and then we had this factories new processes came in and eventually uh, what we started doing is mass production so mass production basically means producing same type of cars and products right so they are identical they are in fact exactly the same because you are using machines uh, to to produce these products so this thing, this mass production thing or similar sort of product hangover can be seen in many universities and colleges as well. Because uh, after finishing your college or university, you will eventually work for these factories. So what factories want is from you is that you should be able to work this many fixed hours and you should be able to do this routine job. The more clerical work you do the better you will get with it the more production work you do the better you will get with it but after a period of time you find that uh, people will become expert in one thing but uh, when it comes to creativity and other things then we are lacking because universities were designed in such a way that they were teaching similar sort of things they were training basically this mass production kind of people I hope I'm making sense here. So this is background information. I believe that without this, this, it would be a bit difficult for us to understand what autonomy is all about. Then in Western world, all these uh, famous universities, they realize this thing that uh, you cannot innovate. You cannot be creative if, you're, if your syllabus is fixed, if everything is basically focused towards this industrialization. You need to think out of the box. You cannot pay attention or your all energy should not be invested in this 
one basket so they started this autonomy and they started uh, trying autonomy and other things and uh, then they now they are successful and this is right as well you cannot just pay, uh, pay attention or your whole energy should not be given to just industrialization what about services and other things isn't it so universities in this way play a very important role particularly higher education institutions right they play a very important role here in thinking out of the box and and it's not just just about commercial products it's about science it's about social science it's about our way of life you know understanding brain and how it works and there are so many things i can go on and on and i'm sure you all are aware about this thing as well that research in research doing research is means you have all different branches right uh, or different topics on which uh, we find that research is going on in different part of the world now a scheme a new scheme is out and this scheme is being released by this uh, you can say hrd ministry then you have this ugc right uh, university grants commission so they are saying that they have launched this autonomy greater autonomy scheme for our educational institution so that they can also think out of the box now how they are going to do it they have this neck scores so ugc they they have this NEC mechanism, NEC committee will visit different higher education institutions and then they will go through all this do's and don'ts and things like that and then they will give grade based on uh, their their performance. Uh, so you have grade 1, grade 2 and lower grades. The institutions uh, this with the highest grade, uh, they will be allowed or they will be given this autonomy, this freedom to start new courses they can hire foreign faculties they can pay higher perks and pay to their faculties if their performance if this is uh, something that they think that uh, this will help in creativity and better learning and things like that so it sounds good no doubt and autonomy is something we have talked about and i'm sure you understand this thing as well that we have to think out of the box that autonomy is something that is that can be said as a key for improving the quality of higher education in our country now the big question that we should ask to ourselves is that this steps uh, that this giving this grade and then you give this grade and then you decide it then if you are highest then you will be given freedom if not then you won't be given with this necessary freedom is this thing uh, something that will means can it produce result yes or no we'll try to find things about it now the thing is uh, you have this university grants commission if you go through the name if you pay attention here it is grants that means money right uh, money is involved here so it was set up basically to finance higher education institutions in our country now one thing that we have this thing in society you don't have rules and regulations written for it but everyone understands this thing that a person or an institution that is giving you money will have a sort of solid influence on your on your working isn't it or, or or on your freedom this institution will decide whether you are free or not and so far if we see then we find that UGC has uh, dictated uh, syllabus it has decided syllabus for higher education institutions it has uh, set up this minimum qualification standards for recruitment of teachers and uh, it has uh, talked about this uh, specified attendance this much attendance should be there or else uh, you want to be given your pass result and things like that so these are the things uh, that are dictated by UGC and the main reason for its setup was to provide finance but as you can see it is controlling many other things as well now so far these things are done by UGC and what we find we find that our institutions are not among the top 200 institutions in the world right and uh, here again when UGC is talking about giving the standards again remember this thing you have to catch up catch this thing here that this ranking is given by UGC right it will decide whether you fall in this category 1 or grade 1 grade 2 or lower grade now there are many different reasons why an institution is under grade 2 or grade 3 and this NEC committee as well is uh, not something that is you can say a sort of universal standard uh, they too have many things I have seen them performing so but anyways I don't want to comment on them the thing is this is not going to help us this is not going to help us and the reason why it is not going to help us is because 
we are using we are just changing the name and a bit of we are making bit of changes here and there and with the help of this standard ranking we are trying to achieve what we are trying to achieve we are trying to achieve autonomy and we are trying to achieve freedom and creativity because the main purpose here why they are talking about autonomy and all these things because even HRD minister said that because of this thing because of this autonomy the so-called autonomy higher education institutions will be able to create good quality knowledge and things like that but the thing is dear friends uh, if we if we really go through uh, or why if we go through great institutions and I'm saying this because I have a bit of practical experience uh, I have uh, been lucky enough to visit some good institutions some great institutions and I have seen I have interacted with their research fellows and their faculties and other people and I know this thing for sure that over there you find a totally different culture you don't have to follow this hierarchy Right over here how it works is that you have this vice chancellor and uh, vice chancellor then you have different heads right uh, head of uh, management and head of etc uh, etc et and under this head you have other teachers so basically your vice chancellor will dictate or if something if, if vice chancellor fancies something then that will happen if vice chancellor decides that uh, this is something that you should do then they have to do it and things like that again you see this structure is of this mass production structure isn't it where do you find creativity here now leadership is such a thing creativity is such a thing it's not that uh, if you are at higher post if you are IS officer then only you are creative and then only you are smart not at all there are so many changes that you find in bureaucracy in different parts in different organizations right there are creative people at all different level you have to understand this thing that you have creative people at different level you have uh, leaders at different level and you have say for example if you have a teacher or a professor who is a leader and that this person can really come out with something solid uh, and if you are giving orders if orders are coming from top and if no autonomy is provided here then you can see here that we are the, the stakes are quite high we are losing on knowledge knowledge is power and all the things that means if you go back in the history as well then you will find that all these wars during this war era all those kings have won the war who have used the latest technology and in innovative methods and creative things they are the ones who have ruled the world and today as well you see different companies and countries uh, those countries who are good in R&D have succeeded in all different aspects may it be waste uh, wealth from waste or may it be eco-friendly things protecting forest and you know libraries and I can go on you can have many different examples anyways uh, so this is something that we need we don't need this military system in our or police or force system in our universities they need proper autonomy and when we say autonomy they should be allowed this full freedom because here you find this Cambridge University when this Higgs uh, joined this Cambridge University it took like like for first 15 years for first 15 years he did not publish anything can you imagine this thing for first 15 year he did not publish anything but then as well see the culture of this university this Cambridge University that they had this patience that uh, even for 15 years here what you will find if uh, within a couple of months if you are not producing anything then you will be kicked out so this is a very bad autonomy culture that we that we find here over there you find that they will allow you full freedom and what they got from this freedom Higgs they got this good particular person who has worked in good particular who has got Nobel Prize so this is the culture that is required here the other thing is we have to accept failure the big problem in our universities is that we don't accept failures and failure is it may sound failure but from this failure someone else will succeed and knowledge is something that has multiple sources different people learn at different stage different people produce knowledge at different levels so you cannot have this fix uh, you know age limit and all these things for universities and there are other things as well and if the more autonomy you give to all these leaders and creative people they will be able to produce more good things for you more good knowledge that can help the whole society that can uplift whole society the other thing is you also talked about uh, we can also chat about this thing this autonomy when UGC is 
saying autonomy and we are giving you you can decide your perks and pays and things like that but at the same time the catch is that these institutions will generate their own funds so what will happen because of because these institutions won't get this financial help they have to or you will see this dominance of all those courses that are that are dictated or that are basically required in the market but what about all those other courses or other research that are important for human beings and life and other aspect of development so here as well you can see uh, this thing is basically it will not help universities and higher institutions they will require money you cannot add you cannot ask a scientist right to to, to do a labor work for you no you cannot you have to give that particular person a full freedom i hope things are clear to you now moving on to news item impeachment it's not always the solution this is said by uh, Chalamiswar, Justice Chalamiswar, he was uh, uh, on stage with Karan Thapar and they had a one hour meeting or interaction and we're talking about different things. Now, remember this statement is coming from a person, a justice who is part of this collegium system. Collegium system includes five uh, members. You have Chief Justice of India and then you have uh, four senior most Supreme Court judges and uh, Justice Chalamiswar is one of them. And he has said that uh, no system created by human beings is perfect. We need more uh, transparency. He has talked about this thing that uh, there should be an audit of judiciary and its collegium system because we are living in a democracy. About this master of roster on which you have special video lectures available on our YouTube channel. So you can check it out if you want to know more about master of roster. But it all started back in january when this uh, four senior most judges of collegium they came out uh, for a press conference and they were not happy with chief justice of india and chief justice of india basically came out with this master of roster now but the thing is uh, we need more transparency and this statement is coming from a very important player in judiciary so keep this thing in mind moving on to another item nepali's uh, prime minister he was here nepali prime minister he was here and uh, both leaders had a bilateral meeting with each other and you know this uh, Nepal has basically indicated it has stated its concern regarding this economic blockade economic blockade took place back in 2015-16 and uh, it lasted for several months now Nepal is a landlocked country and most of its uh, supply is coming from or been going from India so when you create this economic blockade uh, you are disturbing its whole market and uh, you are also creating huge amount of pressure on the government so this was done by india sadly but this is clearly stated by nepal that this sort of games will not be entertained by nepal and this is right as well uh, if we be impartial then this is right that nepal will of course uh, it is a very you can say poor country and uh, hopefully new government will take it to the path of development and here china and india can play a very important role in the development of nepal and nepal will try to make the most out of this difference between china and india in fact it is talking about this uh, this uh, whole south asian portion uh, becoming one becoming one in the sense more integrity in terms of market and other things and we talked about this thing a couple of days ago remember i provided you with all the facts and figures it was a very wonderful article on integration of south korea so south asia so you can uh, add the statement given by pm Kohli, only pm only on the things that we have discussed earlier on moving on to another item a sad news item coming from germany here is the map of germany this is berlin and this is the place uh, munster and here uh, three people uh, died because of an attack now before moving ahead dear friends uh, do give me the name of this country this one and this one from north to south give me the name of these three countries europe was and in fact is in news so there are high chances that you may find a question on map based question in your prelims examination now a van driver basically rammed over this uh, people who were sitting there and uh, three people have died this is a very strange thing uh, and very sad as well because we find this sort of attacks uh, taking place in european countries particularly in france and germany and uk and all these places uh, because uh, it's not easy to get firearms over there so this terrorists are using this sort of method still investigation is going on let's wait and watch for the full report i'm not saying that they are the person who has done it is a terrorist but there are high chances because that person killed himself after the crash science and technology news very quickly nasa has ordered 
this company called Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company to come out with or produce a supersonic passenger plane by 2021 and the plane will be known as X plane it will travel faster than speed of sound it will uh, travel at 1512 kilometer and with this I have one more question what is the speed of sound give me the figure how many kilometers makes this speed of sound with this uh, small but important uh, news item primary forest what is primary forest all about it is basically composed of this native vegetation and are still undisturbed by human activities are called primary forests but uh, sadly they are being interfered by human beings and they are declining but the good thing about uh, Sikkim is that because of high altitude right uh, of uh, high altitude and rough terrain uh, or tough terrain people are not able to chop down this primary forest uh, moving on to another item uh, good news you can say uh, because we have seen this thing this industrial wastewater destroying our fresh water as well so uh, scientists uh, from the CSIR Central Salt and Marine Chemicals Research Institute from Guj Bhavnagar, Gujarat, they have uh, synthesized a graphene iron sulfate, sulfide nanocomposite to remove this toxic material like uh, lead, uh, chromium and other dyes from industrial wastewater. This will be very helpful. The person that you can see on your screen, I'm not sure whether you recognize this person. His name is Pratipal Singh Matharu. And uh, he is a scientist. He is not a common scientist. He is very uh, unusual scientist because the things that you can see behind him are uh, robots. And these robots are not ordinary robots. They are made from scrap items, from trash. And this is the beauty. This is what we call creativity and this sort of persons right like uh, Pratipal Singh Matharu uh, they should be they are in fact uh, um, is, uh, they should be supported uh, they should be basically given all this fame by us people right uh, we at least we can support and just to say thanks to them because uh, these are the silent heroes and uh, these things will help so this is the thing and uh, moving on to last item it's coming from Facebook now the chief technology officer of Facebook has said that uh, 87 million USA means people from USA 87 million people mostly in USA their data has been shared with Cambridge Analytica so this is a big thing uh, coming out so this may bring some fresh trouble for Facebook and that's everything in today's discussion these are your answers I have got three questions for you guys in total I have given you five questions. right one is based on this uh, map the second one is speed of sound and three questions here and i will appreciate that if you can stick all five answers in the comment section of today's video and our dear friends before moving ahead if you have learned something out of today's discussion then please don't forget to give your like and do check out studyiq.com for this pen drive and tablet courses they will help you immensely with your preparation don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell Again, give us your like if you have learned something and pass your valuable comment. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Enjoy your Sunday and I will see you tomorrow. Jai Hind.